let us start our discussion from where we left in the last class. So we are discussing on reactor configuration. Now in the reactor configuration vapor phase reactor you have seen the, the susceptor is kept like that. So how, why the susceptor is kept in the slant position, slant direction not is a just uh, kept uh, as it is in a horizontal, is a, some slant is there. So that I will explain for first. So you see here, uh, this is the susceptor, okay. On the susceptor if I keep the substrate like this, this is a susceptor and I have kept the substrate, this is your substrate and the substrate is silicon, this is the silicon substrate I have kept here. So instead of slant position if I keep like this, then what is the problem? Now the gas flow over the reactor, the whole thing is inside the reactor, this is the reactor, the quartz tube, okay, you have kept the susceptor something like that, this is the holder, susceptor holder there. So now this gas flow, this is a gas flow. gas flow here are laminar. So laminar flow because very low rate flow rate is maintained by the mass flow controller and laminar flow is there over the substrate surface. Now here SiCl4 or SiH4 silane gas is the source gas and along with that what is there? The dopant gas that is either phosphine or arsine or diborane. So now those gases along with the source gas will flow into the reactor chamber. Now if this is the, the age of the age of the substrate. Now there the laminar flow of gases they will face some obstruction at the edges here. You can see. So now this laminar flow means layer by layer gas will flow. So that will face some obstruction and the original path will be inclined like this. Similarly the next layer and the next layer. So as a result of which what happens you, you can see here, this particular substrate will face source gas as well as dopant gas more compared to this substrate. Compared to another substrate if you keep here, so here another substrate if you keep so that also will face less. So that means the dopants and the source gas has to diffuse and they, they have to come across the silicon surface then it will deposit here. Now if I keep the susceptor and the substrate like this, so at the entry point the source and dopant gas will be in close proximity of the silicon surface but at the larger distance from the entry point those silicon substrates will not get enough amount of source and dopant gases at the surface because of a layer and this layer is known as the boundary layer and its another name is called stagnant layer stagnant layer or boundary layer. Now as a result of which what will happen? The growth rate of this particular substrate, silicon growth rate of this substrate will be more compared to silicon growth rate in this substrate. And this boundary layer thickness will increase if you go further away from the entry point. Okay, under root of it, it is proportional to 1 by d under root d. Okay. So now uh, this particular thing will, will hamper the epitaxial growth process by non-uniform growth. Growth will not be uniform. You can prevent this problem just by tilting the substrate in certain angle. So now if you raise this point, this particular edge and what is shown in the earlier picture if you keep it something like the, if the if the if the susceptor is something like this okay if it is in this direction so some angle is there so now if you keep the substrate like this here 
So now this this boundary layer which is there, then here the whatever the gas streams are coming, so that's all the substrates will have chance of source gas and dopant gas concentration uniformly. So that is the reason the the substrate configuration is little bit wedge shaped or slanting nature of the substrates are used and that you can see here in the in the diagram uh, you see how the susceptors are kept. So in this configuration susceptor configuration the stagnant layer or boundary layer problem is minimized. I cannot say it is nil but it can be minimized in this fashion and that angle is of the order of 3 to 5 degree angle with the horizontal line. Okay. So now, uh, now let us discuss on the the VP growth steps, hyperphase repeat excel growth steps. So here also it is shown the stagnant layer you see on the surface some stagnant layer may be there. So by the slant by making this configuration of the susceptor the stagnant layer is minimized here. Now let us see what are the reaction steps and the one means it is uh, uh, at the beginning and the H2 plus SI H2 Cl2 these are the source gas and H2 the carrier gas and they are entering into the reactor and in this location first reaction is gas phase decomposition. That means in the gaseous phase the gas has not yet come close to the substrate surface but at the gaseous phase itself because these are the flow lines gas flow lines there itself what is happening the SI H2 Cl2 decomposes and it forms this is the silicon atom, these two are hydrogen atom and these two are chlorine atom. So one silicon, two hydrogen, two chlorine in this fashion it decomposes SI H2 Cl2. Okay. Now in the second step is a transport to the surface of the wafer. So that means this combination that means silicon, hydrogen and chlorine combination they are transporting to the surface is shown by the arrow. You see this is a silicon and chlorine they are transporting to the surface and hydrogen is a carrier gas so the hydrogen molecules will mix up with the carrier gas H2 it is also shown the hydrogen H and H. So those two hydrogen those mixes with carrier gas and these are lighter gases and that goes out but what is coming silicon and chlorine this combination of silicon and chlorine uh, precursor atoms they are come close to the surface and they are transported to the surface. Now the third one is the is shown here at the surface. Third one is absorption at the surface. Who is absorbing silicon atom? So you see once this hydrogen atom evolves here the rest of the things is silicon and chlorine. One silicon and two chlorine and this one silicon and two chlorine after coming on the substrate surface they are absorbed at the surface and the absorption of silicon atom. Now they diffuse, fourth is a diffuse, after absorption they will just move on the on the surface that means they will arrange see one silicon atom, the next silicon atom I will show in the next diagram how they are arranged just like a brick in making a building similar fashion. So that is uh, the fourth is the diffusion, then fifth is the decompose. Again you see here the chlorine and hydrogen because they have to form HCl and decompose and the next one the reaction, the reaction byproduct dissolves, the reaction byproduct should go out that is as an HCl. So that is the sixth here the H and Cl chlorine they will combine together and here hydrogen and chlorine they are combined together they will form as HCl and they dissolve means they evaporate from the surface. These are the steps gas phase decomposition, transport to the surface of the wafer, then absorb at the surface, then diffuse from the surface, then decompose and reaction byproduct dissolves. So these are the steps in total vapor phase epitaxial reaction process, growth process. Now this diagram will show you the arsenic doping and growth process, how the arsenic doping is taking place 
and the, how the growth proceeds. Here this is the silicon total surface and SiCl2H2 this is the last stage of SiCl4 reaction that is silicon plus 2 HCl. So now these one by one silicon atom are, are you see just like uh, are coming here this one silicon next silicon the one layer complete up to this then again next layer will come. Here is one arsenic, arsenic here SiCl2 this from SiCl2 silicon and 2 chlorine the silicon atom 1 is here and here is one like here like that. Then you see ASH3 so arsenic atom and 3 hydrogen the hydrogen 3 1, 2, 3 are, are separated out and arsenic atom is separated and that arsenic atom is coming here and one here. So that means atom one atom that means this is diamond like crystal structure that is why it is shown like this not round shape. So the silicon here and then one arsenic here maybe next phase one arsenic will come here. So this is just like building a house one brick then another brick that is arranged in order regular fashion in orderly manner not in irregular way. So that your the crystalline continuity is maintained. So it is not like that at a particular region the layer will grow up and thickness will be more and another region not. So it is when it is grown one by one then it will complete the whole this monolayer then it will start the second monolayer then the third monolayer in this way layer by layer it will grow and it will follow the crystalline quality or crystalline structure of the substrate material okay. So this is the growth process actual. Now silicon growth rate with temperature is shown in this particular diagram. Growth rate here and temperature in the X scale here. So you see there are four uh, all the four, ga uh, four gases are gas reactions are shown here. One is SiCl4 silicon tetrachloride that is this curve silicon tetrachloride, SiHCl3 trichlorosilin, SiH2Cl2 dichlorosilin and last one is SiH4 is the silane gas. So now A and B it has, it has give, uh, divided into two part. So in the B part is basically the uniform growth rate up to certain temperature but here you see if you actually here the growth rate is not there because at 600, 700 you see it is increasing steadily but here almost steady growth is there. In this region steady growth is there, in this region steady growth is there, here steady growth is there. Now you can see in case of SiCl4 that is this curve the steady growth takes place at about 1200 to 1250 degree centigrade this region whereas SiHCl3 this curve it is say 1100 degree centigrade roughly but SiH2Cl3 it is 1050 degree centigrade even you can get uniform growth rate. But in case of SiH4 the growth starts at 900 degree centigrade because the straight line which is drawn here separates A and B region. B region is a growth region uniform growth rate region and A region here the reaction is not taking place and growth rate is not uniform you can see it is varying okay. And now the uh, for the different composition the growth rate are shown here and almost all the cases it varies from point, uh, point 0.2 to say 1 micron and growth rate always we adjust the flow gas flow rate uh, using mass flow controller so that growth rate is not very rapid and slow growth rate gives you less defects in crystalline silicon okay. So next the susceptor configuration we will discuss. Three different types of susceptors are used. One is known as horizontal susceptor, another is barrel susceptor, and another is pancake type of susceptor. Susceptor means the container of the wafer, okay. And the horizontal means is a rectangular slab on which you can keep many number of large number of silicon wafers and pancake type of I mean like this. So here 
at the middle holes are there through which gases will come and at the very very you can keep the substrates and this is the barrel reactor this is a rectangular parallel pipette like that. So, here there are 6 faces barrel and each faces you can keep the silicon wafers. Now, in a horizontal this susceptor there are reactor configuration accordingly named where the horizontal susceptor used it is known as horizontal reactor where barrel uh, susceptor is used it is known as barrel reactor and where pancake type of susceptor is used, it is known as pancake reactor. So, in in the three configuration you can see the in case of barrel and in case of horizontal in both the cases you can use large number of wafers whereas in pancake the throughput will be less ok. And all these reactor configurations are are uh, developed one by one. The main emphasis for these developments are two reason, two factors. One is throughput must be high so that cost of epitaxial growth should be less. And the second was the minimization of the stagnant layer. And third one, the flow on the surface flow means gas flow, either precursor gas or dopant gas or carrier gas all the gas flows must be laminar in nature, slow and laminar in nature. So, keeping in mind all these, so several reactors have been configured and those are shown, they, those will be discussed and shown in subsequent one diagram. So, now, the requirement of the susceptors are discussed here. Whatever the shape of the susceptor, either it is horizontal or barrel or it is a pancake type, so, there are certain requirements must be fulfilled and those are namely susceptor should not contaminate AP layer and should not react with process gases. That means, susceptor material should not react with the gases. The gases may be arsine, may be silicon tetracloid or may be silane, all those gases should not react with the susceptor material. And at the same time, uh, they should not contaminate the gases. That means, the susceptor material should not out, out gas some of the contaminations into the reactor environment in the chamber. So, that we have to take care. Next is for RF induction heating, we use a graphite because for RF induction, the susceptor should not be insulating material. It should be some conductor material for RF heating purpose. So, that is why there we can use the graphite material. For a radiant heating also graphite, quartz, polysilicons are used for radiate heating. Polysilicon etched by HCl because if you use polysilicon as a susceptor material, then the problem is in many of the, the VP reaction HCl gas is produced and that HCl gas will react with the susceptor material and the polysilicon will be etched. If the susceptor is polysilicon, it will be etched. So, that is why the polysilicon is coated with silicon nitride, thin film of silicon nitride in order to prevent etching of the silicon susceptor by HCl gas. Okay. So, one of the good choice of the susceptor material is graphite. So, graphite coated with thin layer of dielectric which will prevent the contamination from the graphite on the gas also. So, now next point is graphite is a very soft material that is why a coating of 50 to 500 micron silicon carbide or glassy carbon or pyroelectric graphite is done because graphite is very soft the material may come out. So, a thin coating is given and that coating is silicon carbide coating on the uh, susceptor surface. Okay. Phenols or cracks cause contamination. The susceptor should be free of pinholes or cracks, otherwise it will contaminate the epitaxial film. Wafer edges chamfered and susceptors wrong to minimize turbulence. 
So that is another thing which I will discuss in detail in the next view graph with some diagram. Chamfering of wafer should not be there. It's very important. And how the chamfering chamfer takes place now that I, I will discuss here. You see the diagram here. So here, uh, for example, if the horizontal reactor is something like that, horizontal susceptor, for example. So in the in the horizontal susceptor, if you keep a substrate, then over the entire substrate, the temperature is not exactly same as the susceptor temperature. For example, in the susceptor, inside the susceptor temperature is say T1 and then the temperature on the surface is T2 because susceptor graphite bulk its temperature may be T1 and on the surface will be T2 which is less than T1 because on the surface gas is flowing. Because of the gas flow <coughs> the surface susceptor surface temperature will be less than susceptor bulk temperature. Now on the surface of the OFR, this is the OFR which is kept on the susceptor surface that is T3. T3 will be less compared to again T2. Now if there is a small gap between the edges of the OFR and susceptor surface, then this edges temperature T4 will be still less because at the edges a gap is there. That means if the, if the temperature is non-uniform, that means back side and front side temperature of the substrate is not same, then there is a chance of bowing, formation of bow. So formation of bow like that will take place. And if the bow forms, then again this edge and the susceptor are at a wide distance compared to this small gap. So that means again temperature difference are there and because of the temperature difference, the formation of bow will be much more prominent, clear. Now the problem comes now if the temperature on the surface of the silica is different at different spot, then growth rate of silicon on the surface is different at different region. That means ultimately you are not getting uniform thickness of epitaxial film on the entire substrate surface. The problem is much more critical if the substrate dimension is large. For example, nowadays people are going to use 6 inch diameter or 8 inch, 12 inch diameter silicon wafers, very large area silicon wafer. So there if the temperature is not uniform over the entire surface of the wafer, then there is a chance of non-uniformity of silicon epitaxial layer. And in order to prevent that non-uniformity in growth process, so the wafer, the susceptor is shaped like a bow and when it at, at, because of the temperature difference if the OFR forms a bow it will exactly fit on the groove on the susceptor. You can see in the diagram here a groove is formed. This is the just horizontal silicon wafer. If it, if it takes a form, a form bow like that and that you cannot prevent and that bow you cannot see naked eye. It is so micro bow, so it is very difficult to see naked eye. Even that can, because a slight variation of temperature 1 degree, 2 degree will lead to non-uniform silicon growth. So, so it, it will take exactly the shape of this in the depression and then this problem is solved. So that is why this is much more in RF induction heating, because RF induction heating means it is a cold wall reactor. So there what happens? The susceptor will be heated much compared to the ambient and compared to the wall. So temperature gradient will be there 
and the temperature is highest in the susceptor and it will be less in the environment and the wall of the reactor. Ambient and the wall in the reactor inside the reactor uh, uh, chamber. Okay. Now, this is the full uh, thing of the horizontal uh, susceptor. There you can form the group. This is the top view and the cross sectional view. Here you can see the groove is formed and um, uh, silicon wafer when it is takes the bow shape, it exactly fit into this the depression and temperature will be uniform and non-uniform growth will not be there. So that is the another point. Is solved by a, the, this problem is solved by cutting pockets in the susceptors to heat edges. So edges are heated uniformly similar to at the middle. Okay. <coughs> now the reactor configuration as I was mentioning in the earlier slide that the susceptors of three configuration is a barrel type and horizontal type and pancake type. Similarly, reactor configurations are also three types. One is known as the horizontal reactor. This is the this one horizontal and there you can uh, use the horizontal reactors by horizontal susceptors and there the problem is the, uh, the boundary layer and another thing you have to ensure the, the wafers which are kept inside the reactor should experience the source gas and dopant gas concentration uniformly over the entire surface. All the wafers inside the reactor should be in contact with uniform concentration of source and dopant gases. So that is why the reactor configurations are changed from one design to other design so that large number of wafers can be handled at the same time growth rate will be uniform and that is possible when the reactant gases or precursor gases are, are of same concentration on the wafer surface which are which are there in inside the reactors. Okay. So, in that case here uh, uh, in horizontal reactor and the vertical reactor you cannot have large number of wafer uh, at a time, you cannot accommodate large number of wafers at a time. So, throughput will obviously here not high in these two cases. And other one is the barrel reactor. The barrel reactor configuration, there are six barrel susceptors are used, barrel configuration. There are six phases and each phases you can have large number of wafers like what are the capacity in case of horizontal reactor, similar slab you can use in the six phases and here uh, it, it, the, the shape is shown so that some angle is maintained. Can you, did you notice the shape of the barrel? It is not exactly, for a vertical uh, the surface are not exactly same, same because it is some, here you see small, here is large. So that is, that means here this sort of shape is there, some angle is there. That is only to reduce the stagnant layer or boundary layer thickness. So that the, all the wafers will experience same amount of the precursor gases and growth rate will be uniform on all the wafers. So in case of radiant uh, or barrel reactors, we use uh, the RF induction heating, uh, no radiant heating, we use radiant heating. In case of this horizontal reactor, sometimes RF heating is also used and the gas is flowing here. Basically the gas flow in barrel reactor and horizontal reactors are same, you see, because here it is on the surface like this, parallel to the surface. And in this case also the gas flow is parallel to the surface here. <coughs> and this barrel, the, the susceptor, if you rotate it with a slow motion, so all, all, the, all these uh, surfaces are rotated and then you will have uniform growth over the entire, the slowly rotating. In case of 
this vertical reactor so gas flow may be through bottom and there are some configuration where the gas flow are coming from the top because the in, in inlet is made at the top and the in that case the flow will be almost turbulent because vertical gas flow will make turbulence on the surface of the of the wafer and as a result of which uniform uniform growth is not possible there. So that is why sometimes the vertical uh, slits are made and there the gas flow nature is not turbulent you can create laminar flow. But out of the all this con configuration the radiant barrel reactor is the best one and it is used in industrial purpose. Now this barrel reactor is shown in little bit detail in this diagram. Horizontal flow barrel reactor you see the actual schematic of the chamber is not so you should you should draw the earlier diagram this is a little bit complicated drawing and I will show the different portions of this particular reactor here is the quartz lamps the lamp modules are kept in this in this side side heating and input gas is flown in this fashion because all the gases will flow here this is a horizontal flow the gases will flow here on the surface these are the wafers and here are the optical temperature sensors are kept here input of the gases because there is a gas lining inside the reactors is made so that the horizontal flow is maintained and laminar flow motion is also ensured. So for, for that uh, the reactor configuration actual the structure is not so simple as you have seen in the earlier diagram okay here is some exhaust because you, you have to before starting the, the gas flow you have to evacuate the chamber then you have to purge with hydrogen and then you have to send the precursor gases. Now in case of epitaxial reactor you, since the hydrogen is using as a carrier gas so handling hydrogen is also difficult compared to nitrogen all of you know because hydrogen burns and there is a high chances of explosion and if it comes in contact with oxygen is not it H2 plus oxygen it will form H2O and which is is an this reaction is not very uh, congenial reaction but it, it is, a, is, a, is a dangerous some, some, some time explosion takes place okay. So when you work with any any reactor configuration which uses hydrogen you have to ensure that there is no stress of leak should not be any leak into the reactor otherwise danger may appear okay. So now the barrel reactor why it is so popular there is some points behind it there sideways wafer mounting reduces particulates this is one point the wafers you are mounting side wall. So if there is a shower of particles they will not fall that will they will they will not stick on the surface is not it in a horizontal reactor the particle which are coming from the gas or if there is a nucleation in the gas phase those particle will fall on the substrate and will stick there but in barrel reactors you see the wafer uh, the gas flow are uh, gas flow are horizontal to the silicon surface but the mounting of the wafers are sideways so all the particles which which are coming from the either gas phase nucleation or the gases that will that will fall straight away down and it will not contaminate the surface. Second is from side radiant heating causes a less temperature less temperature gradient wafer bow and slip than radio RF heating those formation of bow is a problem in RF heating the temperature gradient inside the bulk of the susceptor and surface will come in case of RF but if it is a radiant heating that problem is not there radiant heating from the initially the substrate surface temperature is more compared to the uh, susceptor 
okay. So front side radiant heating causes less temperature gradient and we have had bow and sleep less in less than RF heating. Shape of the susceptor causes velocity to increase with distance and maintain constant boundary layer. Uniform boundary layer thickness. So that will ensure uniformity in thickness of epitaxial film. Cold quartz cold quartz wall reactor, cold wall reactor versus hot wall polysilicon LPCBD system minimizes uh, contamination because here a barrel reactor we are using cold wall reactor, a radiant heating from the sides will heat the susceptor but not the wall, wall are cooled using cold water circulation. So, the cold water, cold wall reactor minimizes contamination, okay. These are the advantages of barrel reactor compared to other configurations and that is why they are popular. A halide transport system for growing gallium arsenide epitaxial. So, sometime the, the VP system is used for gallium arsenide. So, there uh, halides solid source are used instead of gaseous source and ACL and dopant gases are, are, are flown and uh, are, are flown inside the reactor and their solid gallium source are heated and the gas is evolved and they will, they may grow gallium arsenic because arsenic is coming from ACE. Uh, H3 arsenic gas ASH3 and there is ASH3 arsenic and gallium solid those combined may form the gallium arsenic layer on substrate that is the halide transport system okay. That is, that is one of the use in case of VP reactor configuration. Now uh, I will uh, switch over uh, to the next uh, reactor system which is the liquid phase epitaxy. LP reactors, how it looks and how simple it is, I will discuss it before going to the growth kinetics of VPE. Let us change the slide and we will go into the and change the slide, not discuss on the growth kinetics, liquid phase epitaxy. Okay. So, liquid phase epitaxy, then I will after uh, finishing this liquid phase epitaxy reactors, then we will discuss growth kinetics, maybe in the next class. Uh, LP you know is a growth via direct precipitation of AP material onto substrate from a saturated solvent solute mixture. Here the precursor are not gas phase, it is liquid phase. So, you have to have saturated solvent solute mixture, it is mostly used for 3,5 growth. Liquid growth most common solvent for gallium arsenide, typical growth temperatures are 650 to 800 degrees centigrade in this particular cases. Growth is initiated by lowering temperature of the saturated solvent in presence of substrate low growth rates are possible of the order of 0.01 micron per minute and ternary semiconductor materials are also possible for example, aluminum, gallium, arsenide growth, algas growth. Okay. Sometimes the, the growth of this particular uh, film, epitaxial film using LP is done at a lower temperature by using suitable solvent and that will reduce the boiling point of that original, sorry, original precursor liquid, okay. And 
another thing you have to have saturated solution of the of the solvent solute mixture so major limitation of this lp growth is poor surface morphology surface quality is not up to the mark it's not very good in case of lp growth so now growth techniques few are shown here there are four techniques first one is a tipping technique and you can see this is the saturated melt saturated melt for example if you, you, you want to have the gallium arsenide so it may be gallium chloride gallium chloride is the liquid so that melt or arsenic chloride mixture with certain stoichiometric ratio you can use one is to one that liquids uh, saturated melt are kept here now the slice I mean substrate or wafer is fixed here now what we do keeping means you tilt it from this direction to this direction understood now if you keep it in this direction so the slice is submerged in the liquid now next step again you tilt it in this direction then it will be act no it is it, it is out of the solution and keep it some time it solidify so this is saturated solution and in the saturated solution once you just you tilt in 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 the forward direction and then tilt in the reverse direction then after some time again tilt in the forward direction so each time when the substrate or the slice is submerged in the liquid it will some coating of the liquid will be there on the surface in the next step when it is coming out of the liquid so that solidifies at at uh, 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 at um, uh, Lower temperature. For example, if if the melt is kept at a certain temperature, higher temperature, so when inside the melt, so temperature of the sub, uh, substrate is higher. So now, when you take out of this, so slice temperature is lower. So then this liquid will solidify because it is saturated solution. So this technique is known as a tipping technique. The next technique is known as a rotating technique. What is that? Here there are two chamber. This is the melt. and here is the slice now you just rotate it you can see the arrow you just rotate it and in the next step this will come here so melt will come because it filled with liquid okay in the next step again you rotate in the other direction so here the advantage is in this case you can use only one wafer but here you can stack of wafers you can use and sometimes just in a enclosed uh, say chamber stacked wafers are there and is filled with liquid once you rotate in this direction and next time you rotate in this direction something like this okay and it will just uh, when it is again merged into the liquid the some of the liquid film will be there on the substrate and the next phase when it is coming out in the top side here so it will solidifies on the substrate so it recrystallizes there that is from liquid to solid so that is lp growth and the other two techniques are the direct immersion and sliding technique and the direct immersion is this one so this is the direct immersion technique and in this direct immersion technique you take the melt now this is the slice to dip into the slides then you take it out that is one way for or if, if you Uh, if you dip in a rack type of thing okay and with a rack multiple wafers you dip it and then you raise it then again it will solidify the crystallizes on the substrate and again you can dip okay in this way this is known as a direct immersion technique and the direct immersion technique if it is a manual so that means you see depending on uh, the your manual the lifting of the slice from the liquid the surface of the film may not be uniform thickness 
may not be of uniform thickness. So it may be, it, it may lead to non-uniform growth of the LP of semiconducting material. So the fourth one is known as sliding technique. In the sliding technique, so here a, is a graphite block is a fixed and another is a graphite, graph, inside the graphite slide is there. This is a graphite slide. So now there, lot of groups are there. Now uh, in that group, substrates are kept. Okay. Now here, the solutions. Now you see. So similarly, different uh, on on the on the graphite upper block, you can keep different holes, and there you can put different solutions. And now if we if the graphite slide moves inside, then the substrates are coming just below the source, then this source, there is a mesh type of thing. So through the mesh, the liquid will, the source will be deposited on the substrate and then it again moves here, then you can creep another source material and that layer will form, then again you slide forward, then maybe another liquid will deposit there. So in this way, just sliding technique, you can have the multiple layer of different liquids. So that is for example, if original gallium arsenide substrate, you want to have gallium aluminum arsenide. So gallium arsenide, then say aluminum arsenide, then gallium aluminum arsenide, three layers. In the, in the three group, in one group you keep the melt of gallium arsenide, then gallium aluminum arsenide, then again gallium arsenide. So in this fashion, you can have multiple layer of the film in the sliding technique. So the in this particular case, you are making saturated melt of the solution and that melt temperature can be lowered by add, adding some uh, adding some uh, material that means in gallium arsenide solution if the gallium reach then the melting point will be low and lower lower melting point you can make it by making gallium rich solution then when when you dip the substrate there that is lower melting point material and in this way uh, just uh, the solidifies mode when it because when it comes out of this melt solution and you can get the growth uniformity also the over and above you see what are the techniques i told you that technique uh, the control of the thickness is is not very accurate and obviously the way the it is it is either immersion technique or sliding technique or or dipping technique there the surface quality cannot be good surface quality cannot be ensured so that is one of the biggest problem in LP growth. And nowadays the LP growths are never used in any of the uh, 3.5 semiconductor technology and silicon technology where the wafers are, are used for making chips. The LP is now only for a rare crystal growth and to characterize the crystal and its chemical composition etc people are using, not for making epitaxial growth which will be used for VLSI. So that you can imagine that cannot be done, you can presume it because the, the way it is being done, the, you cannot uh, guarantee the uniformity of the growth, you can guarantee the quality of the surface, smoothness and the doping uniformity, you cannot ensure that. So that is why the LP is nowadays obsolete process for making epitaxial film which is suitable for making VLSI chips. So let me stop today, next class we will discuss on the growth kinetics of VPE.